Aligning the burrs on any Eureka Mignon series coffee grinder is a simple task that nearly anyone can do at home. My method works without making permanent changes, so if you end up dissatisfied with the result, you can quickly undo it and restore your grinder to its factory condition. Eureka did a fine job designing the Mignon for ease of cleaning, maintenance, and repair. Nearly everything is modular and there's plenty of space. The grinders are easy to take apart and reassemble. You don't need any special skills or equipment. You won't need a dial indicator or shim stock. There will be no grinding or sanding. A whiteboard marker and a few bits of aluminum foil are all you'll need to do a professional job. But don't just take my word for it. Stick around and see for yourself. It's like a miracle. Step 1. Unplug the machine. I would hate for one of my viewers to lose a fingertip. Now pull off the plastic badge. Back out the screw behind it. And lift the top cover away. If you dose by time, the grinding pathway will be full of coffee in all stages, from splinters to powder, so you'll need to give it a thorough cleaning first. If you're a single doser, you can probably just vacuum occasionally as you go. This is an example of the Mignon's exceptionally low coffee retention. Follow the link above to a full Mignon review where I discuss that and various other features in detail. There's no need to remove the front cover if the grinder is relatively clean, like mine. Permanently mark the orientation of the stationary burr carrier to the motor mount assembly. Now mark the orientation of the lower burr to its carrier, and the upper burr to its carrier. We don't want to change the orientation of any part. If we do, we might end up having to make the adjustment more than once. The lower burr carrier is mounted directly on the motor, which of course has to be balanced, so the chances are good that it will be properly aligned, but let's make sure. Use a whiteboard marker, not a permanent marker, to color the lower burr's flats. Now replace the upper carrier. Always remember that you're using steel machine screws with aluminum parts. Don't over tighten any of the fasteners or you might strip the aluminum threads. You won't need to run the motor at any time during this procedure. Many people run their machines to find the zero point where the burrs touch, listening for that characteristic chirping noise, but I disapprove. Instead, you should use vice grips to turn the motor manually and work by feel, not by sound. Make sure the motor spins freely, that the vice grips aren't touching the carrier at any point. Turn the motor in reverse so that the burr's cutting edges are moving away from each other. You can detect very light contact this way. Tighten the grind adjustment screw gradually until you feel a slight resistance when rotating the burr. Open it again and confirm that the flats are clean, which they are in this case. This means that the lower burr's distance from the upper burr, or from the nearest part of it, is consistent. But what about the upper one? Perhaps it made flush contact with the lower one, or perhaps only a small section of it did. We'll have to check. Ink the upper burr's flats with a whiteboard marker and repeat the alignment check exactly as before. Here we see a different story. Only a portion of the stationary burr made contact with the lower one. The clean area here corresponds to a narrower gap between the two surfaces, where they touch first. Now, the burrs themselves will be nearly identical. It's the gap between them that might be uneven. It's almost certain that the stationary carrier is not parallel with the lower one. Our job is to bring the inked area of the stationary burr closer to its companion to make them parallel. I'll adjust this with shims made from aluminum foil. I simply fold them to make them thicker as needed. You can use shims in one of two locations, either between the burr and its carrier, or between the carrier and the motor mount assembly. 
Each has its advantages and disadvantages, so I'll demonstrate both. First, let's shim the burr. Remove it from its carrier. Take care with the slotted screws. They mangle easily, but they're relatively hard to over-torque, so they're safer than Phillips, Torx, Hex, etc. The smooth side of the burr has a narrow machined area around the edge that lies on the carrier surface. That's where the shims go. Notice that the area needing to be shimmed is at 12 o'clock when the black orientation marks are aligned. The midpoint of that area corresponds to a single screw location, so I'll use two shims, one on either side of the screw hole near the outside edge. That will bring this untouched portion of the burr closer to its companion so that the two can make flush contact, which indicates that they're parallel. Now, if the midpoint of the inked area were to land between two screw holes instead of lining up with one, your instinct might be to place a shim between them, but that would be a mistake. The shim would become a fulcrum and you would risk bending the burr over it. In a case like that, you should place shims on either side of the two nearest screw holes, like this. However, in my case, the midpoint aligns with a single screw hole, so I'll need only two shims. A little schmear of machine oil will help keep the foil in place. Next, line up the burr and its carrier according to the original black marks. Never forget that steel fasteners can easily strip aluminum threads if you apply apprentice torque. Ink the flats again and redo the alignment check. All right, about 95% of the ink is gone. Don't waste time trying to get it any closer than this, because even if you succeed, there will be no benefit. The advantage to shimming the burrs is that once you get your adjustment set, it will stay that way. The disadvantage is that it involves a few extra steps. Now let's place the shims between the carrier and the motor mount assembly. Instead of narrowing the distance between the burrs, shimming here will increase the gap. So we need to shim the opposite side, where the ink had rubbed away indicating early contact. Line up everything according to your original marks. Once again, the midpoint of the area we want to adjust lines up with a screw hole, so I'll need only two shims. If the midpoint had fallen between two holes, I would use four shims, just as I showed you earlier. The advantage to shimming the carrier is speed and simplicity. The disadvantage is that you can easily disturb or lose the shims whenever you clean your grinder. So why would you wish to make this adjustment in the first place? Well, coffee nerds tend toward obsessiveness, so some of us will just sleep better knowing that our burrs are aligned. There will be some consequences in the cup. A more consistent gap between the burrs will enforce your upper size limit. Therefore, big particles will be more uniform. This means marginally better extraction from the large bits. It also means that more tiny bits will splinter off, so you will get more fines. Flat burrs produce more fines than conical burrs in general, so by making yours more parallel, you're enhancing your grinder's natural tendency. The effect will be subtle, but you might see slightly longer shot times, and you might notice a richer texture in your espresso or mocha pot coffee. Paper filtered coffee could slow down a bit, so you might want to grind a hair coarser to maintain clarity of flavor. Or use faster paper, which you can easily do with Hario filters. Or adjust your water temperature down a bit. Or you could just go with it and enjoy the slightly rounder, sweeter, more chocolatey flavors. You could even enhance the effect by deliberately grinding finer than before. Indeed, greater precision lets you get away with grinding finer in almost every application, except espresso where your shot times might increase a bit and require you to grind a little coarser. But however it turns out, remember, if you don't like the changes, you can undo them easily and restore the factory performance that you're accustomed to. So long as you're minimally handy, you've got nothing to lose by trying. Well, that's all for today. My next video will be something of a holiday surprise. After that, say late January to early February, I'll demonstrate a few advanced moves to refine my mocha pot technique. So keep in touch. Cheers.